guys, today we are back to the Ashanti roots, the epitome of the Ashanti history, and we are at the Akompo Anochik site, where the sword that has been in the ground for a very long time has not been able to be taken out. Let's go and find out how this sword still remains in the ground and the history of the Ashanti surrounding Okompo Anochi. Hey, young Craig, come speak in. The entry is two Ghana cities each for adults, but if you're a non Ghanaian, it's five Ghana cities for some reason. So feel free to say you're a Ghanaian when you get here. And it's one Ghana city for children, and non Ghanaian youths are three Ghana cities. This is the Okomfanochi sword site where Okomfanochi commanded the golden stool from the sky in 1695. I mean, at that time, there was no Asante mine, which is the Ashanti region. There were individual states who then agreed to come together, unite and become one force, just so they can fight their masters, who were the dangerous at the time, and they wanted to fight them in a war. So at that time, the Dentra Kingdom, which is now the central region of Ghana, they were very powerful and had defeated the Adansi Empire. So when the Adansi Empire was defeated, all the states became part of the Dentura. They then had a meeting to come together as one and fight the Dentures in a war. So it was at then, at this site, that Okomfo Anochi commanded the Golden Stool from Heaven, landing on the lap of the then Chief of Kumasi, who was Osei Tutu the first. After the stool had landed, all the chiefs were given a sword to swear an oath of allegiance to the golden stool as well as the king. So after the oath of allegiances, the chief stools were taken away from them and these stools were a symbol of authority and office for the individual heads of states. So because the stools were taken from them, it meant they no longer had any authority. A hole was dug and the stools were buried within them. Pieces of their hairs, fingernails were burnt with the addition of palm wine. I mean, all the heads of states had to drink it as covenant. <laughs> Interesting. And the leftover was used to pray on the stools and then the sword was placed in the middle of the stools. Okonfuanochi then covered it and told them that the sword in the middle sealed the unification of the states. He warned that the day the sword is taken out of the ground, the state will collapse. Did, can you imagine? If the sword that's in the ground after all these years is taken out, the whole state, the Ashanti Empire, will collapse. I mean, this means the very day, I know I'm repeating, but it's so important, the very day the sword is taken out, the Ashanti Kingdom will collapse. And since 1695 till today, apparently nobody has been able to take the sword from the ground, whether manually or mechanically. And, you know, many have tried, including, you know, even the renowned Muhammad Ali in 1965. 
I mean, I would love to try because I like to think I'm very strong, but. <laughs> Uh, but yes, every year libation is poured onto the soul twice a year. And you know, and many ask till this day, so what happened to Okonfa Noche? And sadly, Okonfa Noche on his quest to find the antidote for death, unfortunately never returned and was not seen since that day. However, his significance in the Ashanti history remains until this very day. So it was an absolute privilege to visit his site and see where the sword is still in the ground up until this very day for you and I to witness and to learn a little bit about the Ashanti history. Guys, I hope you have been indulged into the history of Okonfo Anoche and I hope my motto to aspire to inspire is continue to be impactful in your lives as I continue my journey in Ghana. Make sure if you are new, subscribe because we have more to come. Until next time, kiss from this dimple, kiss from this dimple, Equia dimples. I am signing out. <laughs>